Matayaw, mabuhay everyone. Welcome to our first lecture. This is your legal research and writing. Before we begin with the depths of legal research and writing, let us first define the words that you can see on the screen before we move on to much deeper topics. By the way, I am your professor, attorney Lavelia Fem Tactor. When I was still in law school, legal research and legal writing are two different subjects. However, with the new curriculum, they have combined both research and writing. Hence, your subject is now called legal research and writing. And when we say legal research, this subject also has something to do with analysis and writing. Before we define what is analysis and writing, let us first define what is research. I know that you have encountered a lot of definitions of research, but tonight we shall have this definition. It is a method of searching an issue closely and meticulously. From academic perspective, it is the systematic study or investigation of existing facts of knowledge to any matter undertaken with the objective of finding out the truth for reality. When we research, we allow ourselves to find the right solutions to key issues in our community and in our daily lives. It also provides us facts that will help us analyze the problem and test the feasibility and the impact of the different programs that we are actually developing. But the most basic reason why we research is that we want to expand our knowledge. Now let us take a look at the different scholarly definitions of legal research. According to G.D. Braden, legal research is the study of relationships between the world of law. According to Frederick C. Hitch, legal research means the inquiry and investigation necessary to be made by legislatures, judges, lawyers, and legal writers in the performance of their functions. According to E.C. Cerency, legal research may be defined as the search for the authority and precedent in sources of law. And according to S.R. Maineni, legal research is the systematic investigation of problems and of matters concerned with laws such as codes, acts, and etc. Legal research actually is the process of identifying and retrieving information necessary to support us in our decision making. In broader sense, it includes analysis of the facts of a problem and concludes with the application and communication of the result of such investigation. Legal research is a process-oriented activity. It requires search strategy, like figuring out what the case is about or what legal issue do we need to research. It can also be what is the need to locate, read, and update primary and secondary sources of information as well as other legal and non-legal matters. In simple words, legal research is actually a problem-solving approach. When we say legal research, there should be a problem. And when we say problem, this means that there is a certain matter which is being considered by a certain population or group of individual, which is the subject matter of concern and needs to be corrected. Thus, legal research deals with the cases whether of purely legal or non-legal nature, like social, economical, political nature, with the motive of finding the solution that lies within the aspect of law. Legal research is actually performed by anyone with the need of legal information like lawyers, law librarians, and lawmakers. The source of legal information may be wide range of law books and magazines to free legal research websites. In order for us to understand what is it that we need to research when faced or confronted with a problem, we must first take a look at the Philippine legal system. The Philippine legal system is aptly described as a blend of customary usage and Roman law or civil law, as well as Anglo-American or common law system. However, the Philippine legal system is more of a civil law. The civil law operates in areas such as family relations, property, succession, contracts, and criminal law. Statutes and principles of common law origins are evident in such areas such as constitutional law, procedural law, corporation law, negotiable instruments, taxations, insurance, labor relations, and banking. In some southern parts of the Philippines, there is also what we call the Islamic law. 
the main sources of Philippine law are the Constitution. Legal sources differ in their relative authority. Some are binding, others are only persuasive in various degrees, and some are only considered as useful tools for finding other material. These variations require that researchers must always make careful and critical evaluation of the sources they study. Whether researching by book or by computer, one must be familiar with the three broad categories of legal literature. And these are the primary sources, the secondary sources, and the finding tools. When we say primary sources, these sources are actually binding. Secondary materials are not binding but are persuasive, while finding tools are not persuasive and are not also binding. Primary sources of the Philippine laws are actually the constitution, statutes, treaties and conventions, and judicial decisions. The constitution, of course, you already know, is the fundamental law of the land, and its authority is of the highest order, which no other authority can prevail. Meaning, the constitution is the fundamental law of the land, which all laws must conform. Statutes are intended to supply the details which the constitution does not provide for. But your statute must always conform to the constitution. Philippine law is also derived from cases. The civil law provides that judicial decisions applying to or interpreting the laws of the constitution shall form part the legal system of the Philippines. What I just said a while ago is very important. You should memorize it until you reach your fifth year. Only decisions of the Supreme Court are considered jurisprudence and are binding on all other courts. They are also binding to everyone, like our laws. Judicial decisions actually assume the same authority of the statutes to which they apply or interpret until authoritatively abandoned by the Supreme Court. In the Philippines, we have these courts, the MTC, MTCC, MCTC, Family Court, we have Regional Trial Courts, Court of Appeals, and the Supreme Court. There are also other special courts, and these are the Sandigan Bayan, Court of Tax Appeals, Sharia Courts, and Quasi Courts or Administrative Agencies. By now, you should know what are the cases that fall under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. Now, let us move on to the sources of legal research. Well, of course, the sources of law is part of legal research. Legal research involves the use of a variety of printed and electronic sources. The printed sources include the constitution, statutes, court decisions, what else, administrative rules, and scholarly commentaries. Computer databases containing these and other materials have dramatically changed the nature of legal research and improved its effectiveness. That is why our professors before would always remind us to study because it is much easier to study in this generation compared to what they've been through. Before, they always line up photocopying the cases and reviewers. Now, it is always within our reach. All we have to do is to use our computer and we must also know how to use prompts so that what we are looking for on the internet will come out. The volume and variety of legal literature continues to grow, making the researcher's choice of tools and tactics for each problem more difficult than ever. Because as a legal researcher, you have to be wise and you must be able to identify which of the available facts and law should be applied in your case. A thorough understanding of available legal resources, both published and computerized, is necessary. There are as many procedures as there are problems and no single approach can work every time. That is why you have to be very familiar with the different sources of law. Again, the sources of law are primary sources, secondary materials, and finding tools. Let us go to primary sources, and these are actually binding within the courts. And when we say primary sources, primary sources of law are those recorded laws and rules which shall be enforced by the state. They may be found in statutes passed by the legislature, regulations and rulings of administrative agencies, and decisions of appellate courts. In a primarily civil law jurisdiction like the Philippines, the products of legislative actions 
codes and statutes are the first major primary sources. Codes and statutes have come to govern an even greater variety of human acts. The second major category of primary sources is judicial decisions. Our Philippine Supreme Court and Court of Appeals produces decisions that constitute our case law. Our judicial system consists of hierarchy of courts, including a number of trial courts like the RTC, MTC, MCTC, and the Intermediate Appellate Court or the CA and the Courts of Last Resort, which is otherwise known as the Supreme Court. This system of courts in the Philippines incorporates the process of appellate review in which higher courts review the decisions of lower courts and thus judicial review. What happens in a judicial review? It determines the validity of legislative and executive actions. Another third important primary source is administrative law or the regulations and decisions of government agencies. State agencies also promulgate regulations governing behavior within their areas of expertise. So agencies also act as quasi-judicial or quasi-judicial capacity by conducting hearings and issuing decisions to resolve particular disputes. So when we talk about primary sources, we are pertaining to statutes and jurisprudence. Statutes or statutory law are defined as the written enactment of the will of the legislative branch of the government rendered authentic by certain prescribed forms or solemnities or otherwise known as enactment of Congress. Generally, they consist of two types. We have the Constitution and the other one is the legislative enactment. In the Philippines, statutory law includes constitutions, treaties, legislative enactment, municipal charters, municipal legislation, court rules, administrative rules and orders, and presidential issuances. And when we say jurisprudence, these are cases decided or written opinions by the court and by persons performing judicial functions or our honorable judges and justices. It also includes rulings in administrative and legislative tribunals such as decisions by the presidential or the senate electoral tribunals. Secondary materials, what are these? These are publications which are not considered as primary authority but which discusses or analyzes legal doctrine which later on become part of our law. Secondary materials are actually publications which discuss or analyze legal doctrines. These include treaties, commentaries, and encyclopedias. Some of the most influential legal writings are found in the academic journal known as law reviews of law schools or some publications. Secondary materials vary widely in purpose and quality, ranging from authoritative treatises by great academic scholars to superficial tracts by hack writers. Secondary materials vary widely in purpose and quality. So the best sources of secondary materials are works of authors such as Arturo M. Tolentino for the Civil Code of the Philippines, and for remedial law, we have Florence R. Regalado. These authors have persuasive influence on the lawmaking process by virtue of the prestige of the quality of their scholarly works. However, you have to note that finding appropriate secondary materials is most often accomplished through the use of law library catalogs. However, you must remember that in finding appropriate secondary materials, you must know the sources of these materials and, and you must always consider who the author is. Let us go to finding tools. Our legislative, executive, and judicial branches have already promulgated a lot of laws. The researcher, therefore, needs search materials or finding tools in order to locate these legal sources. So a varied group of finding tools can help us research easily with a legal dispute that we want to resolve. So we have the SCRA, Quick Index Digest, Field Juries, and Lex Libris. These different search engines provide for the capability to search for cases and other documents by using practically any word or combination of words. All you need to do is to know how to prompt your search engine. Finding tools are only a means for locating primary sources. It is then necessary to read those primary sources to determine their applicability to a particular situation. In legal research class, as in other aspects of the lawyer's work, 
you must always employ a highly developed sense of relevance, a keen appreciation of which sources are legally and factually relevant to the specific inquiry needs a lot of experience. So to sum it up, these are the different sources of law in the Philippines. We have the Constitution, administrative or general orders not contrary to the Constitution. We have statutes, laws, presidential decrees, executive orders, or batas pambansa. We also have jurisprudence and judicial customs, decisions of foreign courts if applicable, principles governing analogous cases, these are doctrines, principles of legal hermeneutics, you can learn this in your statutory construction, and equity and general principles of law. Why is there a need to study legal research? A lawyer is required to provide competent representation to a client. Competent representation requires legal knowledge, skills, thoroughness, and preparation reasonably necessary for the representation. Clearly, a lawyer must be able to research the law to provide competent representation. Why? Because you cannot just go to court unprepared. You will be putting into risk the case, the claims, and the rights of your client. In addition to requirements of professional responsibility in our legal ethics, questions relating to competency in legal research may arise in suits for damages arising from legal incompetence or claims for malicious prosecution. You cannot just file any case that you want. That is why there is a need for legal research. The knowledge and ability to use fundamental research tools and to implement an effective and efficient research plan must become part and parcel of every lawyer's training so that you can provide competent representation to your client and uphold the standards of the legal profession. In fact, in 1992, a special task force of the American Bar Association on Law Schools and Legal Profession issued a report stating that it can hardly be doubted that the ability to do legal research is one of the skills that any competent practitioner must possess. In order to conduct legal research effectively, a lawyer should have a working knowledge of the nature of legal rules and legal institutions, the fundamental tools of legal research, and the process of devising and implementing a coherent and effective research design. Now let us go back to this slide because we have already discussed what is legal research. Therefore, we also have to define what is analysis and what is legal writing. As a law student and a future lawyer, you should know the fact that you must first research and then you analyze and then you are going to write something. Legal writing is the act of legal professionals in convincing others of his legal stance, position, or opinion presented in a form of writing. I am an English major and an educator, so I am very sensitive with grammars, although I also commit wrong grammars, but that is very rare. And I am very strict with grammars, especially with law students, because you cannot just submit your pleadings in court with dangling modifiers. Subject-verb agreement is very important in lawyering. You know, sometimes it's very disheartening to see lawyers who cannot compose their sentence properly. Legal analysis is the process of determining how the law applies to a problem. In studying law, you need to be very logical. Do not be carried away with your emotions and only focus on the question given to you. In fact, it is very important to first read the question before you read the facts of the case. So what is now the distinction between legal writing and legal research from legal research itself? Legal research is the process of finding the law to a problem. If there is a certain problem, therefore, you have to specifically research the legal solution of that problem by applying the law. So the Philippine Association of Law Schools or PALS, which is an organization comprised of deans of different law schools in the country, conducted a study in 2015 to covering the legal covering the Philippine legal education. PALS conducted a survey among 1,600 lawyers and collected information on their opinion 
towards relevance of certain law subject to a lawyer's practice. So what is the result? The question says, how relevant are the following courses are to the lawyer's present law practice? So when you become a lawyer in the future, according also to other lawyers, most cases they deal with are obligations and contracts. By the way, I'm, I am also teaching obligations and contracts in Davao Oriental State University. Next is legal research and legal writing. In order for you to make a good pleading, you must be a good legal researcher and a good legal writer. It is followed by constitutional law, corporation law, criminal law, persons and family relations. Another result shows the lawyer's opinion about the knowledge and skills that new lawyers should have for the present practice of law. So these are the skill that you should possess so that you will be ready when you become lawyers. So we have number one in the rank are oral, written, and communication skills. Of course, when you do consultation, you must use proper legal language in front of your client and you must be approachable you should not be strict and i am telling you kindly avoid posting or shaming your clients online i have many lawyer friends who do negative comments about their clients and post it on social media please do not do that because if it were me if i have a problem and i look at the fb page of that certain lawyer it would give me an impression that i should not approach that lawyer because he might post me on social media okay so we have legal and contract writing of course this is the source of legal funds when you do contracts memorandum of agreements memorandum of understanding contracts of loan and real estate mortgage and then we have critical and analytical thinking of course legal research and legal ethics legal ethics is the subject that i am pertaining to because when you're a lawyer you will be mandated to uphold the legal profession so you must always be careful with your actions in front of the public so what then is the importance of legal writing of course the survey will tell you that you have to be very good not only in researching but also in legal writing what are the objectives of legal writing we have to help identify and put together the facts on which the issues of a case will be decided to help you find the law or rule that applies to your case given the nature of the legal dispute involved, of course. To help you correctly identify the issues in the case, this one is very crucial. You will be presented with a time bomb facts, but you have to be very careful in spotting the issue. How do you spot the issue when you are taking the exam? Usually, the question itself is already asking for the issue or the legal dispute in the problem. However, you have to be very careful. So for example, if you are answering a criminal law question, do not answer a civil law provision. Make sure that you use a criminal law provision to help you pack power in your arguments, of course, to show you how to edit your work, tighten your sentences. This is very important. And make your writing come through to your reader clearly. In legal writing class, you need not use flowery words. Just use simple words and make it direct to the point. Of course, the objective of legal writing is to help you write better. If you are an English major, particularly in literature, please refrain from using flowery words and be objective in answering questions.